we encounter acids and bases commonly in all walks of life. And today we're going to talk about a handy way to express just how strong an acid or base solution really is. You'll remember that one important definition of an acid is any compound that increases the hydrogen ion, or better said the hydronium ion concentration, when dissolved in water. And a base is any compound that increases the hydroxide ion concentration. The pH scale is used to express the strength of an acid or base solution. Now just by way of reminder, let's recall that the hydrogen ion really exists in solution as the H3O plus or hydronium ion. We'll sometimes use the one, hydrogen ion, sometimes the other, hydronium ion, just to keep you on your toes. But remember that the hydronium ion is closer to the kind of structure that really exists in solution. The pH of an aqueous solution is defined as the negative log to the base 10 of the hydrogen ion or hydronium ion concentration. Now this definition takes a little getting used to, so let's pick it apart piece by piece. First the P. This letter is just an abbreviation of a mathematical function. Specifically, the p of any numerical value is the negative log to the base 10 of that number. Oh. In this case, pH is the negative log to the base 10 of the hydrogen ion concentration, hence the H. So, using this kind of shorthand, what do you suppose the pOH of a solution would be? Well, the pOH is the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration in the solution. Oh. Now, of course, uh, we could use this shorthand to report the value of any number if we wanted to. For example, the p monkeys in a barrel is the negative log to the base 10 of the number of monkeys in the barrel. Now you might well ask, why do we use the logarithm of a concentration? Huh? In a nutshell, the pH scale is logarithmic just for convenience. You see, the hydronium ion concentration of an aqueous solution can range over many orders of magnitude, say from 10 molar to 10 to the minus 15th molar or even smaller. This is like the huge range of sizes in the universe, from huge stars to tiny atoms. Using a log scale avoids having to say things like the acid concentration is 1.0 times 10 to the minus 3. It's just easier to say the pH is 3. You see, they both say the same thing, but the latter uses a lot less lip energy. So the logarithmic scale is just a convenient way to express a large range of concentrations. With this idea in mind, let's start getting used to using this pH scale. First, a handy point of reference. For pure water, the number of positively charged hydronium ions equals the number of negatively charged hydroxide ions. And it turns out that this concentration is 1.0 times 10 to the minus 7th molar. That means the pH of pure water is 7. Since the concentration of hydroxide ions is the same as the concentration of hydronium ions, that means that the pOH of pure water is the same as the pH, namely 7. Okay, let's try a few examples using pH. Take a minute to try this problem. Well, how did you do? The answer to the problem is 2. Where did it come from? You'll remember that the pH is the minus log of the hydronium ion concentration in a solution. So, to determine the pH, we need to take the minus log of 0.01. First, it might be easier to see how this is done by converting 0.01 to a power of 10. It's 10 to the minus 2, isn't it? 
So then it's clear that the log of 0.01 is minus 2. So minus the log of 0.01 is 2. Cool, huh? Now let's try another. To do this problem, let's learn a handy rule about pH. Specifically, the pH plus the pOH of a solution is always 14. Wow! This little equation results from equilibrium considerations covered in a different module. Now let's see how to do our problem. We take the minus log of 0.01 and we get 2. But that's the pOH, and we were asked for the pH. Since the pH plus the pOH is 14, the pH must be 12. There's some useful terminology we use with the pH scale. When the pH is 7, we say the solution is neutral. Now here's the tricky part. When there is more hydrogen ion in the solution than in pure water, the solution of course is acidic and the pH is less than 7. Surprise! Think about it. Because the pH is the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration, as the pH gets lower, the value of the hydrogen ion concentration is actually getting larger. So solutions of pH less than 7 are acidic. And of course, this means that a solution of pH greater than 7 is basic. So, bottom line, as the pH goes down, the solution is more acidic. Look over this scale carefully. It seems at first a little counterintuitive. And in fact, I'd suggest you hit pause and meditate on it a little until the concept really sinks in. Hey, how would you like to see some examples of common acids and bases? Well, here they are. Now that we've seen some common solutions and their pHs, let's talk about how we measure the pH of a solution. One way to measure the pH is to use an indicator that changes color in a certain pH range. A common indicator is phenylphthalein. In basic solution, phenylphthalein turns pink. In acidic solution, phenylphthalein turns colorless. So, if we add phenylphthalein to an aqueous solution and the solution turns pink, then we know that the solution is basic, or at least above a certain pH value. And if it remains colorless, then we know that it's acidic, or below a certain pH value. Some common indicators are methyl orange, methyl red, bromthymyl blue, phenylphthalein, and thymolphthalein. Notice from the table how each has a characteristic pH at which it changes color. Indicators like this are very limited in the kind of information they can give us about the pH. They can tell us the pH is above or below a certain value, but that's about it. Now a more precise way to measure the pH of a solution is to use a pH meter like the one shown here. To make it work, you stick the probe, called an electrode, into the solution and read the pH on the instrument. It's just that easy. And if you're really nice to your teacher, she just might let you try it. Some of you may need a little refresher course about logarithms, so here it is. Any number can be thought of as a power of 10. For example, the number 100 can be written 10 to the power of 2. Now that 2 in the upper right hand corner is called the exponent of 10. And that exponent is what we are looking for when we are identifying the logarithm. So the logarithm of 100 is 2. Now what would be the logarithm of 1? 
to decide, we need to express 1 as a power of 10, and then the exponent will give us the logarithm. You may recall that 10 to the 0 equals 1. Thus, the logarithm of 1 is 0. Now, what would be the logarithm of 0 0.001, do you suppose? Step 1. Express 0 0.001 as a power of 10. Well, 0 0.001 is 10 to the minus 3. Step 2. Choose the exponent. The logarithm is minus 3. Now for something a little harder. What would be the logarithm of 0 0.005? Step 1. Express as a power of 10. Hmm, I can't do that in my head. I'll have to use my calculator. So I enter 0 0.005 and hit the log function key. Out comes minus 2.301. Now that really is the log of 0 0.005, but what does it mean? Well, it means that 0 0.005 could just as well be written 10 to the minus 2.301. So if I say that the pH of a solution is 2.301, I'm really saying that the hydronium ion concentration of that solution is 10 to the minus 2.301 molar, or in other words, 0 0.005 molar. Well, hope that helps.